Hello everybody. My name is Robin Valentina and today I'm very excited to bring you my first ever video on YouTube today. I'm going to be talking about products that I'm getting rid of from my professional makeup kit. And as the name would imply, we're just going to run through why they didn't work out for me. Just a little disclaimer, I'm trying to get my kit 100% cruelty free and vegan. I wanted to throw that in there so you know there's a little weight on that when it comes to the product. And in true Robin Valentine fashion, she's not wearing any nails. So please just ignore that. First product we're going to be talking about is in a mason jar. You may be asking yourself, why is it in a mason jar? Me, being the ditz that I am, I figured when I got my Mayron cream blend stick in the shade 400, I was gonna wind it up all the way and see how much product was in there, only to realize, hey, I can't wind it back down. What do I do now? So, uh, product ended up in a mason jar. I did use this product quite substantially and unfortunately this product just does not apply evenly. It accentuated my dry patches. It looks cakey upon application and while I know a white foundation is hard to formulate, I just wanted a little bit better from my product and since it's already a little dated, it's about time to let it go. Now, the second product I'm going to be getting rid of is my Real Techniques Blending Sponge. I know there's a lot of people who swear by this product, but I just could not get it to work the way I wanted it to. This sponge, unfortunately, seems to hold on to product quite well, and no matter how long the foundation had been sitting on the sponge, it just would not come out easily as compared to my beauty blender which the foundation comes out quite easily <laughs> and i also found that the blending isn't as beautiful i kept finding that the edges of the sponge were leaving impressions on my face so if i'm blending like this i might get a little edge from this area or if I try to use the flat side, I get like a little ring because as you can see, it's uh, kind of an oval. It's great for setting on a table because it will not roll off, but the blend just wasn't there for me. The third product I'm going to be getting rid of is the Wet n Wild Highlighting Powder in the shade Diamond Lily. This highlighting powder is just a little too silver for my liking. You can see it there. And I don't personally do a lot of silver looks. And I do feel as though I have highlighting products that more or less accomplish the same goal. In addition, the product just looks a tad bit chunky, which, I mean, let's be honest, who wants a chunky highlight? Not like this Danessa Myricks highlight and Aura of Radiance. This product, the fourth one from Wet n Wild, is their liquid cat suit in the shade Purple Panic, which was from their Fantasy Maker collection. We go way back. This product was one of, no, it wasn't one of, it was like, okay, I take it back, it was one of the first products I ever reviewed on my website www.therobinvalentine.com and it's also one of my most popular articles. Unfortunately, as fun as the color is, it is incredibly patchy and layering it does not make it any better. The minute you try to layer it, oh my gosh, it crumbles. The fifth product I'll be getting rid of is also in the purple family. It is my Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Quad and Plum. The eyeshadows are quite lovely, but 
I've already got so many palettes with the same color scheme. And unfortunate, well, no, no, unfortunate for this palette, <laughs> this quad, I should say, I don't really need any travel products. I make sure to save myself a substantial amount of time to get ready at home so I don't need to get ready on the go. The eyeshadows are, a, they're lovely to blend with, quite creamy, soft focus, but I just, they're taking up space. I don't need a travel quad. The sixth product I'm going to be getting rid of is another Kat Von D product, and it is the sixth product I'll be getting rid of is another Kat Von D eyeshadow or another Kat Von D product and it is the individual eyeshadow in the shade Danzig. This is a lovely purple. It's lovely iridescent. It has a bit of red to it and it's also got beautiful purple flakes which you may or may not be able to see a uh, blue flakes I should say that you may or may not be able to see I just couldn't think of that many places to use this eyeshadow you're not going to use something might as well get rid of it right seventh product another white foundation this is the LA girl full coverage illuminating foundation and white a little bit patchy, a little dry, it accentuates my dry texture and I know this product is meant as a mixer but I'm proud to say I have a diverse enough shade range to where I don't need mixers and this product just unfortunately does not suit my needs to wear on its own. The eighth and final product I'm going to be talking about this one truly hits home. The Fantasy Maker Purple Panic was near and dear, but this is the one that I have an extended history with. The Anastasia Beverly Hills Subculture Palette. In my opinion, this was probably the most controversial palette to be released in the last few years, which with all due respect to Anastasia Beverly Hills, I do feel as though they're partly to blame. This eyeshadow palette was marketed as the sister palette to the modern renaissance, but the functionality is completely different. So a lot of people tried to use this palette in the same fashion they would the modern renaissance. There was a lot of problems with people having patchiness with the eyeshadows. I was very tempted and eventually gave in to buying this palette to see if all the fuss was correct. I had a great time using this palette, but I just feel as though there's too many dark shades in here. Not enough transitional shades that I personally go for. Like the green, blue, and red, they all just kind of end up in the same area by the time I'm done blending to the point where it just feels unnecessary. And this shade cube in the corner, don't even get me started. I'm gonna try to dig in. It just, it's hard to pick up on your finger, let alone a brush, and it just isn't that impactful. It isn't what I hoped for. I feel similarly to the shade Electric, which it does have a presence, but it's just not that vibrant and it's especially hard to pick up on a brush. So with that, I bid adieu to the subculture palette. Goodbye old friend and the first ever product I reviewed on my website. Thank you all so much for tuning in and watching my first ever YouTube video or Instagram, Facebook. Wherever you see it, just it's my first video. I hope you all enjoyed and I'm hoping that there'll be more videos in the future. Maybe tutorials or other products I'm getting rid of because, you know, there's a lot of mess out there. <laughs> and a big thank you to my friend Ramon Noel Garcia.
for monitoring my camera as I recorded this and for allowing me to record in his studio, Noel Designs in Corpus Christi, Texas. Look him up. And for helping me put together a little photo shoot in this look. Go check it out on my Instagram if you haven't seen it and give it a like as well as this video and make sure to subscribe.